Moncton Airport, information Yankee, weather at 1300 Zulu, wind 210 at 5, visibility 15, few clouds at 12,000, 20,000 scattered, 24,000 scattered, temperature 21, dew point 15, altimeter 29er 79er. Tower, Fox on Victor Victor Yankee holding short runway 29 on Alpha. Victor Victor Yankee Tower, right turn out towards uh, McEwen, about 1,500. Wind calm, clear takeoff runway 29. Right turn out and uh, not, below, not above 1,500 feet on the departure, clear takeoff runway 29. Victor Victor Yankee. That's weird. Why didn't he just give me the cocaine departure? <laughs> so, cross out to the runway. I'm going to turn on all of my lights. Wind direction. I'm going to look at the wind side. Right, right turn out towards uh, McEwen for now. Say again for Victor, Victor Yankee. Victor, Victor Yankee, the right turn out is towards McEwen for now. Roger that. Right turn out towards McEwen. Victor, Victor Yankee. So it's coming from the left, so I'm going to add a left aileron input. I'm going to line up with the center line. Target at 618 tower, the previously and mentioned diamond. One, two, uh, three. Two for, Full uh, power. T's a P's are looking A OK. Uh, uh, Airspeed's uh, alive at 30 knots. I'm going to go ahead and release my aileron input as I speed up. 44 knots. Sure, Let's go ahead. 767 is now at your uh, 10 o'clock. And uh, rotate. Final runway 242,000 feet descending. Uh, traffic inside, sorry, right, And I'm going to pitch and trim for 68 knots. So 10% of my climb speed, 600, 60 feet before, I'm going to start leveling my nose off. November X, Alpha Tower, change order frequency. I'm going to let my speed build up, probably around 95. As I speed up, I'm going to have to add more forward pressure. About right here. I reduce my power to 2300. And I'm now going to trim for this new attitude. And go ahead, put your hands on the controls. Okay. And you have control. I have control. Just keep flying us straight towards Kokan. Okay. And just ensure that our altitude doesn't go above 3000. Right. So, Chris, do you remember uh, descents? Yep. All right, so go ahead. Uh, power to 1500. Okay. We'll go ahead and descend down to, uh, yeah, descend down to 2000 feet. And, yeah, descend at like 90 knots. We're going to talk about attitudes and movements. Okay. So, I want you to go ahead and show me a banked attitude to the left. Okay. Fantastic. So, banked attitude to the left. Our heading is decreasing, speeds remain constant, altitude is descending because we're in a descent. Go ahead and roll your wings level. Show me a banked attitude to the right. Well, we see the angle of the horizon. Our heading is increasing. Turn coordinator is agreeing that we're in a turn. Heading indicator showing that we're banked. So those are banked attitudes. Go ahead and level your wings here. And approaching 2,000 feet. Go ahead and bring our power back to 2,300. Awesome. And we'll keep our attitude and our trim to maintain this altitude. Awesome. Now I want you to go ahead and show me a pitch down attitude. Doesn't matter if we descend, I just want to see pitch down. So 
we start seeing more ground, less sky. We notice our attitude indicator is agreeing that we're nose down. Our speed is increasing. The lower we go, the more turbulent it usually gets. Right. Our altitude wants to descend, but we keep getting updrafts. And yeah, pitch down attitude. Go ahead and show me a pitch up attitude. Pitch up. We're seeing mostly sky now, not as much ground. Airspeed is decreasing. Our vertical speed is positive. We're climbing slowly. And our RPMs are actually decreasing because okay. the engine's struggling to keep our nose up. Okay. Go ahead, bring your nose down. And I want you to find me a cruise attitude. Okay. Whatever keeps us at the same altitude at a constant speed. Awesome. I want to go ahead and take your hand. I want you to put it on the dashboard. Okay. I want you to tell me how many fingers it takes to cover up the ground. Uh, three. Three? Yeah, it takes me about four to cover up the ground. So whenever we're trying to find a cruise attitude, right. a, the simplest way to do it is to find this attitude, to find the number of fingers, cover up the ground that much, and then hold it. After a while, everything will go into equilibrium and we'll be in cruise. That is excellent. So, I have control. You have control. So, you showed me pitch. Yep. And you showed me bank. Yep. Now, we can do both, believe it or not, <laughs> at the same time. What? <laughs> so, we can, we can enter it in a couple different ways. We can bank first and then pitch back. I can also pitch first and then roll, but if I didn't want to, I can do both movements at the same time. Okay. Using diagonal movements, I can pitch and roll. I can nose down and roll. I can do plenty of different combinations. As long as I still remember ailerons and rudder need to be coordinated, when I nose up, the plane wants to yaw to the left, I have to remember that. As long as I keep things coordinated, I can move the aircraft in a bunch of different maneuvers. Just tell me if you start feeling sick at all. Yep. So, you have control. I have control. I want you to get used to how the aircraft feels. Okay. So, go ahead. Any attitude, any movement you want to do, I'm going to go ahead and call Poppy Uniform X-ray, but just have fun with it. Really feel what the aircraft can handle. I'll stop us if we get into a dangerous situation. <laughs> Sounds good. Poppy Uniform X-ray, Victor Victor Yankee. Uh, we're at 2,000 feet, currently over Buck 2. Is that conflict for you? Uh, nope. Uh, I'm over the cocaine now. There's no conflict. Oh, roger that. I didn't hear you. All right, have a good flight back. Yeah, have a good flight. Oh. Oh, God, you guys are going to freaking kill me. <laughs> so I have control. You have control. Now we're going to talk about engine power. Okay. So power changes our attitude. Right. But it changes it in a couple different ways. If I reduce my power to idle, I want you to see what the nose does. Feet off. You have a slight yaw to the right. Right. That yaw causes roll. Right. And that reduction of power causes the nose to go down. If I add power, without touching anything but the power, we have a yaw left. The nose wants to go up. Yep. And that yaw to the left causes us to roll to the left. So changes in power changes our attitude. Right. And we have to know how to deal with it. Okay. If I increase power, I'm going to have to do two things. I need to add right rudder to keep the nose straight, and I need to start adding a bit of forward pressure to keep the nose from raising. Right. I add them gradually as I add the power. If I reduce, well, I just have to release my right rudder, maybe add a touch of left. And then I might have to start raising my nose a little bit to maintain my altitude. So power attitude equals performance. 
If you have a change in attitude, then you need to change your power to maintain the same performance. Right. If I'm trying to maintain my altitude and I reduce my power, I have to pitch up to maintain that altitude. I'm going to use rudder to just make the aircraft yaw in different ways. So, adding right rudder causes the plane to yaw to the right. You're going to start to hear the engine's going to start struggling a bit more. My turn coordinator is telling me I'm not flying straight. Right. It's bad. If I do yaw without using the aileron to keep the wings level, well, a byproduct of yaw is roll. Right. And the aircraft's going to start rolling if I don't fix it. Right. So, I'm going to line us up with this road right here. Okay. Go ahead, and you have control. I have control. I'm going to put in some yaw. Okay. I want you to counter it. Okay. Okay. So it could come at any time. Ah, God. Yeah, so fields like this are fantastic for forced approaches. Right. We add left rudder. If I do it this way, we add right rudder. Exactly. Do so you feel that drop we had? Yep. That's what we'll feel when we practice slips. Okay. Is we're going to feel that drop and we're going to lose some altitude. Right. So, now remembering how power affects my attitude right. when I increase it, I want you to decrease power to 1,800 RPM. Yep. I want you to maintain strain level. Maintain strain level, okay. As our nose goes up, our RPM will drop, so you might have to add a bit of power. But this is exactly it. Reduce in power, you have to use a bit of rudder to keep the nose straight. You have to use your pitch to keep your altitude level. That's exactly it. Go ahead and add power up to 2,500 RPM. So our speed is going to go from quite slow Pretty good. So we need no more forward nose pressure. As our speed increases, the nose is going to want to come up. We're going to have to fight it. This is exactly it. Attitude and power gives us the performance we want, straight and level. We're going to look at compass errors. Okay. So it may seem redundant to have a heading indicator and a compass in the aircraft. But you also find out that aviation is full of redundancies for safety, yep, right? Yep. But also, the compass has a million and one errors right, that right. happen with it. Yep. First one we're going to talk about is the acceleration and deceleration errors. Okay. So, on headings of east and west, there is a massive discrepancy when you increase your speed and decrease your speed. Right, right. So, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So, keep your eye on the compass. I'm going to add power. Okay. I want you to see what the aircraft does. So, my nose didn't change, at, uh, right, feet, right. Working, uh, between 3, but it had a slight dip to work, towards uh, the north, the wind, right. farms, and west if west I slow down, it heads towards the south. Yep. So we use the acronym ANDS. ANDS, yep. Yep, accelerate north, decelerate south. Right. This is also evident when we're turning. Right, right. So there's a northerly turning error and a southerly turning error. We're going to look at the northerly turning error first. I'm just going to do a gentle turn. So, it turns to the north, 290. The compass is going to start lagging behind. Yep, yep. So I'm going through 310. Compass is just getting to 300. The longer I turn like this, the more it's going to lag behind. 360, and it's at 320. I'm going to keep doing this turn. I'm going to do a 360. I'm going to go back to heading of west. Okay. I want you to see what happens when I cross east. And get to east, and the compass realizes how far behind it is. <laughs> Swings the wrong direction. And, well, it needs to catch up.
So now there's this subtly turning error. The yep. compass no, la no longer underreads, it now overreads. Yep. It uh, leads what our actual heading is. So I'm going through south right now. Compass is telling me that I'm at 250. Well, that's not correct. As I keep going, still going to lead. All the way over until I get back to my heading up west. Bungang Tower, this is Victor, uh, Victor, Victor Yankee with information Alpha. Oh, sure, Victor, Victor Yankee Tower. Bungang Tower, Victor, Victor Yankee, inbound from training area 1 Bravo for a one circuit. Victor, Victor Yankee Tower, runway 24, altimeter is 29 or 9 or cleared straight in via overhead Shadiac. Cleared straight in via Shadiac, Victor, Victor Yankee. Yeah, Wasp for a stop and go. Total Tango Oscar Tower traffic, Diamond, just prior I'll land the first one. Okay. I'll give you left control. You. Okay. Two, five, You'll take off, fly circuit, two, and land. Okay. Okay. Tango Oscar. Tower, Victor, Victor Yankee, over Shidiac, joining straight in uh, final for 2 one. The two Yankee Tower, number 3, runway 24, you're following Diamond traffic, joining a 2 mile final from the left base. And luck of traffic number three, Victor Victor Yankee. I'm going to go ahead and set up for my approach. 1500 uh, and below 100 knots, uh, flap stake. I'm going to get a raise. I'm going to pitch down to control that. After that's gone, I'm going to keep pitching up. In the white, flaps landing. Pitch and trim for 60 knots. Now my power controls my rate of descent. My pitch controls my airspeed. If that's uh, India Whiskey Whiskey, India calling the Moncton Tower, the altimeter's 2-9 or 9 or you're broken unreadable. Roger, 2 triple nine for Whiskey Whiskey India, how do you read? Whiskey Whiskey India Tower, that's much better. Uh, the winds on the field are 240 at 12, not above 1,500 feet, and take off your discretion. Not above 1,500, uh, we'll be squawking 1, 2, oh, three, four, for the big markers, I'm going to reduce my power even more. But I'm also going to have to add power pretty soon after reducing it. Because I'm going to get this drop. There it is. Roman well, starts to swallow me up. I'm going to go to cruise. Bring my back pressure. Oh, you felt that? Yep. Oh, butter. Other wheel. Oh, wonderful. All right, okay. I'm going to get you back on side line. Wait for your takeoff laps, put your feet on the pedals, and on the throttle. Three, Thanks two, one, you have control. control. Right wing one, two, three, full power. Peace, peace, looking A-OK, okay. 30, 44, rotate. Rotating. So, Victor Zulu Towers, just bring the speed back a bit. Uh, they're ahead of you by about a mile. You should see them shortly. And congrats, Chris. That was your first takeoff. Fantastic. Whiskey India Tower, uh, what direction are you uh, departing in? Departing to the west. Whiskey Whiskey India Tower, Roger, shouldn't be a problem, thanks. Tower so to Zulu, we have traffic inside at our uh, 2 o'clock. Actually, Victor Zulu Tower, Roger, the uh, left hand 36 is approved to follow that diamond joining the left down one. Make a uh, left hand 360, follow the traffic, uh, to Zulu. Pop up, pop tower from Delta, backtrack and line up runway 24. Backtrack, line up runway 24, pop up, pop up. Right about here, go ahead and start your right turn to, whoops, I forgot I changed this. 330. Three, so. Oh, sorry, not the Midland building. The Kent building is where a good downwind is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Kent, big old sign, easy to see. Yep. <laughs> That's what we'll be aiming for a downwind. For a crosswind, there's no real landmarks to pick. I mean, in between this big body of water and that tower off in the distance, maybe, but... Yeah, the wind's also going to push us off, so... Right. Morning Tower, Victor, Victor, Yankee, right down, wind 2-4, full stop. Victor, Victor, Yankee Tower, number 2, runway 24, behind Diamond Traffic, uh, and the opposite down, when it be in the threshold now, circuit altitude. 
All righty, go ahead and turn your base now. Okay. And uh, I recommend starting your approach now. I want you to take a video of this. This is like some aerial acrobatics. Oh, yeah, bring it back to 1500. Delta Yankee Whiskey Tower, Take off ground up. to the diamond, is crossing the runway Delta to Echo, right-hand circuit, winds are 250 clear touch and go runway 24. And in the white flaps landing. Sir Tower, number 3, runway 24, follow diamond traffic in a two-mile right base. Number 3, looking for the traffic, Echo, no. Don't worry about aiming for the big markers. I want you to aim further for where the new asphalt, where the new runway start. Bro, Pop Tower, what training are you going to? So we'll aim for those last white markers right before the black. Okay. Victor Victor Yankee Tower traffic vehicle, no conflict, just crossing Echo to Delta, Windsor 2410, Gus 15, clear to land, runway 24. Clear to land, runway 24, Victor Victor Yankee. Good afternoon, Encore 3456, clear for DNF, 24, Delta, Transition, Delta, 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 There we go, bring it to cruise, reduce your power. There we go, and ease back, ease back, bit of right runner, bit of right runner, there we go, ba boom! And I have control. You have control. Alright, let's get off. Victor, Victor Yankee Tower left and Delta, maintain right. Hold you.